Our next topic is Fourth Estate Network Optimization. Please welcome Colonel Chris Autry, Military, Direpu Military Deputy, Desktop Services. And thank you for the reminder on questions right before I come to the podium, Jim. I appreciate that. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, as about five or six different briefers earlier today have talked to you about, later this afternoon, you're going to hear about this thing called the Fourth Estate. What does that mean? What's Fourth State Network Optimization Program? So that's what I'm going to talk to you about at a quick high level today. And I'll mention that it's a big program. I'll be back at our booth in the far room down here after as well. So if we want to go in any further one-on-one -on -one conversations, we can certainly do so. All right, Fourth Estate Network Optimization. Out of the IT reform initiatives at the DOD level, one of the areas they looked at were these fourth estate agencies across the Department of Defense and decided that while all these agencies exist and they have a unique purpose and mission for why those agencies exist, they probably need to be focusing on that mission and not things like commodity IT and common IT. So out of the IT reforms, though driven significantly by the cost savings that we could gather out of this, it's helping make these agencies more efficient by providing a single network service provider, be it DISA now as the premier IT service provider for the DOD, to take on this commodity IT mission for them. So what are we doing as the fourth estate network optimization? We're bringing all the 14, first 14 agencies, DAFAs, their agency networks, anything that's common use IT, commodity IT, and we're consolidating them into this thing we call the DOD net. So we're going to have one network provider. This is the network provider being the IT service endpoint provider for all of the agencies. But I mentioned it's IT reform. That's the money driving piece for it. But it's more than that. And that's the takeaway I want you to kind of go away with here. It's not just about the money savings, though we expect that we'll capitalize on some of that as well. It's also about the cybersecurity and the standardization across these agencies. Because today we have a wide spectrum on all these agencies of how well they do things and how maybe not so well they do things in those certain areas. And now we give them a common tool set and a common security baseline for all of these agencies so that we can actually let them focus on their wartime mission. So next chart. So this is the chart behind me that talks about these agencies we're migrating, 14 agencies. Our brochure we have handed out has a copy of this picture as well so you can see them up close. I know it's hard to read the, the slides. Uh, right now on the next chart, uh, we're talking about this thing called Defense Enclave Services. That's what we're migrating all these folks to. That's the fancy name of what we call the Fourth Estate Migration Program and what they're moving to. So right now underway, we have what we call the Generation One agencies, basically the first couple small agencies that we're moving right now under an existing contract vehicle that we're putting in place that's under uh, source selection right now. In addition, we also have done some work on consolidating a single global services contract. Basically, this is the IT support desk contract. And we're going to let these agencies levy that contract today for their existing IT uh, help desk services. But in the end, this is going to be the single service provider for all of these agencies. So uh, what it means is we're going to really be building to the opportunities that we're going to talk about on the next chart. And go ahead and advance to the last one. All right, so two opportunities related to this effort and everything that we're doing about it. The first is a, through the NASA SOUP program, an agency catalog. This is a consolidated IT hardware catalog that allows all of the agencies to order from a standard baseline for the standard, standardized equipment across it to include the agency's endpoint items themselves, as well as anything from an infrastructure perspective that we as the program officer are going to field at a at a higher level for those agencies. So that's the first opportunity. You'll see that's coming up shortly. The next piece is the large contract effort. That's the Defense Enclave Services contract. All those things I talked about that we've been doing for the Generation 1 agencies and then the Consolidated Global Support contract, this contract vehicle is designed to encompass everything that we've done for all of these agencies and roll it up into a single contract vehicle that provides the service for all of the agencies that I mentioned on that first chart. Everything we started in the initial contract we're doing now for the pilot agencies and all the global services contract work. This means everything from a tier one phone call entry enterprise service desk call in function all the way up through the tier three back shop and engineering and development work. That's the contract effort that'll be coming out. Excuse me. The timelines for that contract, we're starting the major acquisition work on that now, but we're headed towards a award in, in 22. 
but this is a significant effort and we expect to have industry days and other items to talk about this between now and then. So that's all I had. Any questions? Colonel, we do have a question for you. Of course you. we do, Jim. Thank you. Do you expect any development under the fourth estate activities, and if so, in what areas? So I'm not sure I understand the question, but I, I think uh, as far as development for innovation, I think the director kind of talked about it earlier when we talked about it this morning. The initial pilot work we're doing now is to kind of see how this initial capability works. But what I'm looking for in the Defense Enclave Services contract when we get to the award portion of that is the providers, you, our industry partners, to come forward to us with innovative solutions on how we can do things better and more efficiently. Uh, I'm kind of going to crutch us to step one, but this is where I'd like to take innovation and, and expertise from your guys in the industry and use it to be a better solution as we migrate the majority of these large agencies into the fourth state. Sir, we have one more question for you. Right, and to clarify for Mr. Bennett, thank you, sir. We're not doing software development type work for those agencies, though. Go ahead, Jim. DISA has advertised the Defense Enclave Services Managed Single Service Provider Contract as being valued at billions of dollars. Are you able to provide the ceiling value for this contract? No, we don't have a projected ceiling for the contract at this time. Thank you, Colonel. All right, thank you.